No matter how I look at it, how much research I do, I keep coming back to one guy that stands head and shoulders above all other researchers and inventors of, I don't know, for how many centuries. And that guy's name is Nikola Tesla. He says, if you want to find out the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, that's exactly what I've been sharing with you here. Mm -hmm. Everything in creation spins and vibrates. Everything has its own prime resonance fr frequency. Mm -hmm. Everything. And this is why once we can identify a prime resonance frequency of a bacterium or, a, or an atom or a whatever it is or a soccer field, we can then manipulate that, that, that object with its prime resonance frequency. In Christianity, it's the word. In Hinduism, it's Om. The Egyptians believed the universe was sung into creation and the original people of... Now, now I want to stop there. That's a lot of information. The universe was sung into creation. Let's talk about it because like they said we born into sin, but we really born into sound vibration and it's a sound matrix so no luminescence what we was talking about earlier which is why let there be light is dealing with sound and light together N let me go into this real quick y'all mute up real quick and then we'll open a, ta a round table see the reason they talking like that for example right look at this style of architecture i was talking about this a minute ago when you walk in this castle there's a certain acoustics in a room that you can't get nowhere else the style of architecture is based upon vibration so if you take this sound wave and you cut it at any point you'll see these same patterns of of a castle of of, of any of these objects here is based upon what i'm telling you is all of this architecture is based upon upon one of the greatest feats of ancient architecture was to make solid uh, objects behave like liquid. You know, this is like manipulating, you know, having, so if you think about water splashing and the way water behave, it's more like this sound wave. Uh, you don't want to think of a brick doing that, but that's exactly what was achieved with like architecture like this, where you have solid structures uh, able to tap into this same um, dimension of the so sound architecture. This is the architecture of sound waves. Let's talk about this for a minute because this is what our universe is, y'all. And when you look at one of these sound waves, there's a horizon line going right through the middle of the wave. And everything at that horizon line inverts, like how you got a bump here but it's mirrored by a bump here. And if you got a little hill here, it's mirrored here. Everything happening above is happening below. So this sound wave is teaching us as above, so below. Now, this simple sound wave pattern is what we're looking at. For example, let's zoom in for a minute. You see this? You got, you, what we got to notice is how it fades in at a line, an introduction fade in and then a fade out. This is what songs do. The loudest part of a song is in the middle of it, and that would be the North Pole at the, er the in our middle of our Earth. That's the loudest song on his album. Leaving away from the North Pole, the songs get quieter. Let me, let me tell you something. Your soul is incarnate. Think of being on a, on a vinyl record, and you're on the outer rings. And your soul is incarnating toward the middle rings just by like it's following the sound. You know, like like if you if you was in a big ass building full of rooms and you heard a party going on muffled and you was like, man, I want to see what a party happening at. And you started following the little muffled music and, and, and little yelling and shit. And it got louder and louder. And now here I am. I found the party. That's how it's going to be when you get back to the North Pole. That's the loudest wave on a song. You see it? It's called Mount Maru or shooting the bird of your middle finger. The middle finger, the tallest one, highest peak. This is a waveform vibratory universe that we're in. And when we look at waveforms like this, you can see them being mimicked by wave by like this, the Big Bang Theory. So the Big Bang Theory is no different than us looking at a waveform. Our universe is one of these. 
and a, uh, uh, it's a song that's fading in and fading out. You see this waveform? That's what we're looking at here. And the loudest part of the song is in the middle. You see the highest peaks? So now let me show you what this is, how this, because the thing about sound that's so paradoxical, right? The loudest sounds are inaudible. In other words, it gets so loud, it's just zero. It's nothing now. Ain't that weird? So you notice at the middle that the highest peak is silence. Look, that's zero. That's zero. See, if you can look at this integer, these integers on a number line, is the, they are stacked just like this sound wave. Zero is the highest point on this integer list. And then it fades down the lower peaks. The lower that the num the, excuse me, the higher that the number is, the shorter that its peak is. The lower that the number is, the taller its peak is. So as we move toward the middle, this thing, it, the zero is a high peak. That's like the, the pole in the middle of a tent. You see what I'm saying? So this is what we're looking at here. Just that you all want to go deep with this documentary, right? So now let me show you something else too. This is how song a song look. What's happening is <clears throat> in the middle is something called a great gap or the great crease. In the middle of our cosmos is called the North Pole. Now let me show y'all something real quick. Take a look at these sound waves for a minute. And I'm finna grab some and thank y'all for, for staying muted for me while I do this little mini presentation. But let me show you this crease. This crease is what they call Christ. The crease is Christ. And that's this gap in the middle of it all. Let me show you this. Mem this blue pole right there that you see represents that gap that we talking about. Look at the crease. In all of these, we see a split, a crease, a gap in the middle of this thing, that North Pole, right? And what I'm showing you is that's zero on an integer chart. You see that? That's like a portal, like an elevator that you can take to go in, into any one of these worlds. That is, that is synced to your spinal cord. And both of these are attached together, you and this pole. Like this pole is literally where your consciousness resides and it's projecting itself outward into all of these ethers and all that where you at now. And it looked like this. So once we go back to the middle of this, we leave duality. See, there's one portion of us on, see, think about this. These are two different songs. Listen, our world is made out of two different universes having sets making their own universe. The sun is its own universe that's just full of daylight. And the moon and nighttime is its own universe where it's always just night there. But they came together 50-50 to make a night and day world right here. And this is what it looked like. Now, if you take this image right here where they both connect like that and you go ahead and finish it off and turn it into a three-dimensional image, guess what you get? This one right here. Now, what are we looking at? Let's go and look at the Taurus field again. See how we going deep with this? Watch this. When they come together like that, this is what we get, y'all. Look. Two songs making one song. You see this image right here? These are, this is like the master card symbol. The sun is its own yellow world. The moon is its own blue world or whatever. But they come together and kiss like this and we get a world where it's night and day. And it looks like this. You see how they kissing each other? And when they come together like that, guess what we get in the middle? This DNA pattern. You see this? If we keep stacking this in the middle of this, it'll just be DNA, which is Jacob's Ladder. And, and this right. Jacob's Ladder would also be the way we get in and out of these different worlds that I just showed you uh, right here. You see, because I can even show you in Aruba Cosmos Right here, the DNA strand lead up, bam, born in and out of these worlds via astral projection, the tethering line, the silver cord, the kundalini. So 
uh, I can stop here showing you about see what's happening. These are two songs, and one is fading in, and then one is fading out. But where the crossover happened, this the Jesus part. See, when they talk about Jesus with his arms spread it out in between the two thieves, you see this little wave right here is like a hook. It's, connect, it's, it's one little string connecting it. If you move this, this will be two different wave files. But this one little thread right here, y'all, is connecting the worlds. You see this one little fella there? That one little, little loop. If you're an audio engineer, I know this is like, yo, that is crazy. I never thought about that, right? This is like connecting. This is like a dude in the gym, right? Let me show you something. Because it's hard to explain without symbols. Watch this. It's like this. That little bitty pole right there in the middle can stack all of that weight on each end. Just that little pole. You see this little pole right here in the middle? But let me show you something about this, right? They, they, they um, personified him. His name was Shu. He's the little fella I just showed you in the middle of the waveform connecting both of the worlds. Do y'all see him holding it up right there? Yeah, you good, you good. We can hear you. We got to go into the symbolism uh, with this waveform shit. So Shu is really personifying his lifeline, his pole or zero. We know that, though. But I'm showing you his shape, and I'm showing you literally two songs connected like two worlds, which is what our universe is, and why that shape would translate even to engineering. So everything. See, all of the stuff they call mythology, religion, and pseudoscience, I, I'm the guy that signed up for the job of showing you that the ancestors wasn't into mythologically and all that and pseudoscience. They was into real science, but they was just teaching it to children in a form of this here. And even well, adults can understand like, it. What is that wavelength you're showing us? Is this, is this two sounds colliding with each other? Th this is not two sounds colliding with each other. This, let me show you what this is. This is what's going on. You ever been listening to the radio, my brother, and while the DJ is fading out one song, he's also at the same time fading in the next song. Yeah. That's what's happening, and our earth is made the same way. Night and day are two different songs that are sharing this that, that one. So here's what's going on. Let's, I'm going to give you another analogy. Let's say you got a radio DJ, my brother. But he got two rap groups and the rap groups fighting for one slot on the radio. And he tell them, look, man, either I'm going to play both of y'all shit or I ain't going to play nobody's shit because both of y'all my niggas and y'all ain't going to make me choose. So it's one slot I got available and it's only for two minutes. I know your song is four minutes and his song is three minutes. I'm going to play one minute of both of y'all song in that two minute slot, a little preview. And I'm going to fade his out while I'm fading yours in when I transition. So we're going to share that slot. And our world was made, and, when, and the Bible will tell you I made, I, I made them equal, one, uh, one night, light for day, one for night. That's what it's taught. See, in the beginning. Wait, Sanchez, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you, can you go back to that uh, wavelength, that, the, the double one, the one that I was talking about? Yeah, here, here this one here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if you look at this and compare it to what our world is, which is right here, it's the same thing. Look, this is what I got right here. Oh, not that one. Not, 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 wait, not that one. Uh, sorry for interrupting you. The, 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 the wavelength, not, not the. Uh, okay, the talk to me. Yeah, Go ahead. Right do, do, do you think? So that yeah. split, that split, are you saying it's complete silence? It's 50 50. In the middle is where my 50 meets your 50, right? So right here, what's going on is everything to the left of, of this little hook right here, my brother, that's song number A. And everything to the right of that is song number B. But this little loop in the middle is, is, is unique. It's something called song AB because they transition here. When you get to this little arch right here in this loop, A meets B. 
A meets B, and they're kissing each other. One up, this is like uh, splicing two different wives together right here at this point. We can't say this middle point is song A or song B. We got to call it song A B because they, right. you, you see, that's what's going on at the North Pole right here where this fish is at. And that song A B is the two DNA strands of your mama and daddy right here. Song A B. Mm. Okay. Or XY, as they call it. It's a paradox, meaning what? A pair. They pair up right here. They tether together right here. See, right here, there is no duality. Right here, there is no night and day. There's something called nay and dike. Did I fuck you up? Let me say that again. Right here in the middle, ain't no night and day. It's just dike and nay. <laughs> it's, a, it's tethered up. <laughs> This is what our earth is, all right? Now, the part that we live in is where both of these triangles meet at. You see this little box right here? Y'all see the white part I highlighted? In the middle yeah, of this, the earth. that's where we live <laughs> at in this little bitty <laughs> slither right here. That's what they're calling the Milky Way. This is what they're calling, watch this, y'all, watch this. This is what they're calling the Gravitron. It's our fucking earth disc. It's like a vinyl record. And everybody in it being burned. That's what I'm saying. This shape here is really what's in the middle right here with the pole in it, like a little slit. That's where we live at, y'all. And above it is all of the layers of the atmosphere stacked up to the heavens and below it going down to the hells and the heavy dense shit. But in the middle, they even out right here. It's an even spot where they clash at, and it makes this dual world that's separated between 50% sky, 50% lower world, or angels and demons, Armageddon, Midgard. You see? And so because of that, we're, uh... we're, 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 that's, that's our Earth. So we got what they say we got a north and south pole, but no, it's one straw with two ends. So if you look at what's happening, there's only one pole, this yellow pole right there. But in the middle of the pole gets split and everything below the pole, right, is like a straw, right? From sucking up drink through a straw. When I take me a mouthful of drink, everything that's left in that straw going to fall back into the cup. I ain't going to, I can't, you see, it reach a point. That's what I'm saying, like, uh. At this middle point, you got beings that can't go no higher than this. And at this uh, uh, middle point, you got beings from above that can't go no lower than this. So for the angelical beings, this is the lowest that they can descend. They are fallen angels. That's where we are. Look at how high we fell from, y'all, to get into this shit. And so the demons that's here, they had to learn how to behave and have some kind of morality so that they can climb up from the pits of hell and be, this is the highest heaven they can go to though. See, the, the way that they, the demons act in this world, these are they saints. You got to think of, think of what, think of what I'm telling you. All the evil people in this world, what if I told you it's levels to evil? And as we travel down this thing, the people that you call an evil in this world, it's some evil down in these pits that make them look like saints. Check it out, right? It's some I good it. it's 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 some good people on this earth. But as you travel up this pyramid, it's some people up here that make the good people on this earth look like devils. They so good. See how this thing go? Think about what I said. Out of all the evil people on this earth, it's some beings down here that's way more evil. It gets more evil. This is the, out of all the evil energy, the evil people in this world would be considered the, they, they like the, the least evil. Out of all the evil beings in the universe, the people that rule this world, they are the least evil ones. So imagine what's below this. You ain't trying to see it. So now, And think about this. On the flip side, out of all the good people in this world, it's some beings above this world that make them look like devils. 
<laughs> they so good. So that's what we are. That's what this you see this paradox is created, and and you got this positive energy beaming itself. Wait, 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 the, Sanchez, say it again. Say it. Again. Can you say that whole thing again? That evil and and like lower. Can you say it one more time? Right. So I can understand. Down here. <laughs> This red triangle represents the devil's tail, and that and that this is a path of descension of people becoming incarnating into worlds that are more and more evil than this one. If you think this world is the evil as it is, that can get you ain't saw nothing below this. When Dante talked about infernos, and he started explaining the different levels of hell. Down in these, in the, see, let me show you what we're looking at real quick on this uh, thing, real quick. Yeah, and what I'm telling you is the evil, the evil beings that's in this earth, they're the saints compared to the other evil beings below this earth. And the good beings that's in this earth, they the fucking worst, they the damn devils that got kicked out of heaven, all of us. But mm. we, the, you see what I'm saying? So the demons that made it up to this middle point, they had to work their way up here through ascension by being good because the, 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 the more evil you are, you go down. So the demons that's in this middle part, they are the best. They the good. It's a paradox. They the good demons and we the bad angels. Yeah. Okay. They're the, they're, they're the demons that rose up from hell and we the angels that fell down from heaven. And we all met here in, in this realm here. And if you look at so this... They was white, too good for hell? hell. They, they, they was too good for hell and they came up? Yeah, what, what, the way that the universe is uh, set up is based on your heart vibration. That's what we just read in the video. Let me show you something. It's the energy in your heart. In your heart is where your guilt is. That's where your conviction is and all that. So what I'm saying is with this energy field shows where you're going to reincarnate in your next incarnation up or down, whether you go on what they call heaven or hell. And the reason for this, it ain't no religious thing. What it is is that energy has weight to it. So like depression, frustration, anger, jealousy, these are what we call heavy emotions. And laughter, joy, that's very light. The more of these positive emotions we got, we are seeing. If we got more heavy, gloomy vibes, your energy, you on a path of descension. A path, and that you got some beings that are harnessing that type of energy. Is that they 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 want to be that way? They like mellow energy or what we call gothic vibes. You know, fuck yeah, let's smash some shit, kill some shit, right? That's you got some demon, you got that kind of energy on the earth. But so, and then the opposite of that is motherfuckers that want to smell roses. They don't want to step on a bee or kill a roach. You know, some damn nature environment motherfuckers. You know, it, these two energies. There's a spiritual war playing out on this plane, of of which so is like a tug, is like a is tug right? of war. Which one gonna you're gonna win? Yeah, and that's what we oh, call so it the tech. We call it that the technological world versus the not or the natural non tech. Yeah, go ahead. You got it. I'm is sorry. that center point? Oh, you said tech. Okay, okay. Oh, never mind. Never mind. You already answered my question. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. So and that's this the cross right there too. Yeah. This is what our earth is, and this is where we is too. And we're we're the same thing too. Everything is a road. yeah, everything is a fractal of this. So that's why you got both of the worlds inside of you too. Part of you is heaven and part of you is hell. See, this is what's what's going on. Y'all see this uh image right here. See. The, yep, thing, yep, the yep. thing about this macabre, right, what's creating the human in the middle of it, see, the human in the middle of this thing is the one in the simulation. That's like Neo sleeping inside of his pod, and he dreaming of his life in the matrix. That's us. That's what this macabre ship is. So when it's time for us to wake up, when we die or whatever, what's going to happen, this little macabre ship going to open up. But how it's going to do it, right? 
that triangle that's pointed upward is going to shoot to the sky. And that triangle that's pointed downward is going to drop down to the hell pit. And it's going to release whatever energy was inside of it with whatever ship is, is calibrated to, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to tell you is this. When, they, when this Merkaba field separates and the, tr and the top triangle separates from the bottom triangle, whichever one of those triangles that your pineal gland is in, that's where you go, heaven or hell. So if your pineal gland is still, it, 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 it can either go down with the bottom one or up with the damn top one when this thing separate. But it, it, it depends on which one of these you gave your energy to the most, which one of them you serve the most. And if you go down with this bottom one, you're going to be born in a world that's even more worse than this one with even more problems to solve. And it's going to get worse and worse and harder and harder. And going up with it's going to get bad and bad and all like that. So, but these two triangles will detach and whichever one you in, when they separate, that's which elevator you taking either up or down. That's how this thing is working. That's why they said be light as a feather. That's why they talked about, see the heart chakra is separating heaven from hell. Let me show you what the heart chakra is. Watch this. If you look at the symbol of the heart chakra, it is a six-pointed star, which is the Macabre, because the heart chakra is what's launching this whole force field around your body. Look at it. You see it? It's all coming from the heart. So get your heart right, man. Now watch this, y'all. We all here to work on the energy in our heart. The heart is get your a- your heart right. Yeah. The energy in our heart is a treasure chest that when your heart stop, think about your heart, right? It's a chest. The little, the little heart that's beating in your chest, think of it as a, like a treasure chest. And when you die and your body decompose, that heart going to open up and whatever energy is released, that's what you harnessed in this world. That's what you're here for to make sure that when you die, you somewhat satisfied with the energy in your heart. That's why the heart convicts us. Guilt is there. None get pride is there. This is the judge right here in the chest. Now, check this out. What's going to happen if you see the heart beating, the, 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 the heart is a vortex with energy from the sky coming down into the body and energy from the ground coming up into the body just like I just showed you with this energy field, you can see in this energy field, there's a triangle right here pointed downward, and there's a triangle right here pointed upward, and when they meet together, that's what's making this Merkaba trapping you in this Taurus field. So was you that see? the silence? So, was, that that, was that that little wave that you were showing me earlier? Right, right, because this is what happened in music, right? When you take a waveform, and you copy that waveform and stack it on top of each other and reverse the polarity on one, you'll just mute the sounds. It'll create silence. So that's what's happening at, at the middle of this. Well, you said so, if you reverse... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, Sanchez, uh, do you think in the future, like, uh, humankind will eventually raise the chakras to the Christ chakra? Hold on, um, I don't want to really get on the, uh, I don't really know what humanity going to do, but I do know what I'm trying to do, y'all. This is a personal thing. See, I stopped my say the world mentality. What I'm finding out, y'all, the more that you work on yourself, the more the world around you will change to that energy, and it'll spread because like a cancer. demons. Bro, I, bro, my, the closest family to me, once you start like worrying about other people, bro, for some reason, it's let me, just let me show them about like let me shit in your face. Let me show them about this reverse polarity, and I'm gonna mute up. See this blue waveform. Let's say that's the original song. Now we're gonna copy this original song, and then we're gonna reverse the polarity, and this is the pattern that we get. Y'all see that pattern? Yeah. That's called the Ouroboros. Look at this. 
That pattern right here of reverse polarity is the DNA strand. And it's also, look at here, let me show you something. It's where the two worlds meet at, like I'm showing here. You see, I've been showing you this. It's, it's, it's the middle of this Taurus field. It's the middle of this. Look at that. Let me show you something. You see this reverse polarity chart? Look at what I was showing you earlier right here. Same thing. Because look, what happens is when you copy a song and stack it on top of each other, well, the song just get louder. But if you reverse the polarity on the bottom song or the top one and invert them to each other and hit play on this, guess what'll come out, y'all? Anybody want to tell me? You get your, you get your, you get, you get a more stereo type nope. of vibe. That, nope, nothing to come out. It'll mute. It'll mute. You get nothing. <laughs> and let me show you what we use this for in sound engineering. Just say. Just say, um, right, that I want to get some acapellas. You know how, like, let's say I want to get me some uh, Whitney Houston acapellas. What I'll do, I'll take her original song, you know, I Will Always Love You, right? And I'll put it on this top line. And then I'll take the instrumental without her singing on it and put it on the bottom line. Because I got the instrumental down here, and the instrumental is the same beat with her vocals on it up here, once I re reverse polarity, the instrumental at the bottom, all of the instrumental gonna just mute, and I'ma just be left with her acapella. When you say reverse reverse uh, polarity, Did what you, you hear what I just that? said, though? Yeah. Just before you asked that? You get what, uh, does everybody get how I, Explain to me how I end up with just vocals now, based on based on that. Because I'm trying to figure out what was the muting point of view. Like when you said everything doesn't make sound, I was trying to figure out like when you, you ain't say, listening to me, brother. I don't think you're listening to me, brother. I'm explaining everything you asking, but you're not listening to me. I promise you, you're not. I'm telling you. Broke. Do you, you got, if you don't understand what I'm saying, your question will never be answered because you just don't understand the science that would answer it right now. I'm going to explain this again. This is two songs that we're looking at. You're reading this two waveforms of opposite polarity. Okay. You know what that is? Let me show you what that's like. It's no different than this right here, what I'm about to load up. Hold on a minute. Computers. This right here, you see that? Yeah. Same with this. These are two polarizing energies inverted or reversed to each other. Both of them by themselves are loud as hell. But think about it. The, 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 the red one is the same song as the bottom one. It's the same song. If we stack the, the blue one with the red one and, and don't invert it like that, it'll just be loud as fuck because we got two songs stacked on top of each other. But if we reverse one of these stacks and make a blue copy and, and reverse it and flip it down like what we see here, you will have these two loud ass songs that ain't making no noise at all. It'll, you'll create a paradox. It'll mute itself. In order for you to understand this, you got to play with waveforms. I'm an engineer, I do music and stuff. If you never done this before, you wouldn't understand. So I'm gonna show you how I use this in music, right? If I hear an old school song and I wanna sample the vocals off that song, but it got the beat behind it, and I don't want all them drums and beat behind that shit. I will find an instrument. Right, right. I, I will. All right, right. Let me mute everybody. I will find the instrumental, right? Of that song. And I will copy it. With the one that I want the vocals from. I reverse polarity. So here's what's going on. On this top bar, I got the song with the vocals on it. And the beat. On the bottom bar, I just got the beat without the vocals. 
because the two beats are in reverse polarity to each other, by the law that I said earlier, once you reverse the polarity to these two songs, they're going to cancel out, they're going to mute each other. You're going to get silence. That's going to be good for me. You know why? Because that's what I wanted, the silence, the beat behind it, and I wanted the vocals off of it. In music, this will literally silence all the drums and beats off of there, and I'll be left with nothing but acapellas. It's like magic, man. It's like magic, bro. It's crazy. But if you look at the pattern that the reverse polarity make, it's the Ouroboros. It's the secret of paradox. It's the secret how you can have the loudest sound in the universe, and that loudest sound is also the most quietest sound in the universe. It's both. That's why it's called a paradox. That's what we're looking at. I hope that makes sense to y'all. I just, I mean, let me show you something. When you see this image that I got on the screen right here, you know what they turned this into? Let me show you something. This became the religious shit. When you see these niggas with two tablets, with the gap in the middle of the two tablets, they talking about this right here. It's a God called Kamazots. He represent this two Jesus coming up out the vesica Pisces. That's you bursting up out this portal at the middle right here. This the portal of your heart chakra. That's the way, the heart is gonna be the way out. Everybody learn that. The mind is the beam, but the beaming device. But all the energy that makes up your essence is, is culminated in the heart. And that's however that energy is when it's released, nature going to do with the law of density. Heavy energy go down and light energy go up. So when this energy out of us is released, we hope that it's light enough to ascend and not descend. We working on our heart because of that. This whole life and every action we make is so that we make the right actions that we don't have guilt in our chest. But the people that wanted to combat this natural spiritual system, they created some called forgiveness. So even when you when you do wrong, you feel bad about it, but you feel better when you ask for forgiveness for God. That right there created a whole world where we stopped practicing this heart-based spiritual system where the, the heart is the God. When we do wrong, we know we done wrong. We can feel it. Even when nobody else know we done wrong and we got away with it, your heart be convicting your ass. So this created a system of integrity on earth, heaven on earth, a bunch of beings protecting the energy of their heart because they knew when it was released upon death, it determined where they was going to go. That got turned into, hey, heaven and hell, and if you don't follow God's orders, he going to burn your ass up. When God telling you to do shit, that's going to keep you on a dissension spiral. God telling you to go to war for him and all this shit. And he, God himself got this energy that's going to keep God uh, descending into this underworld. This is why they gods are demigods. If you look at this image right here, y'all, compare it to this one right here. You see what's going on? You see that? Huh? You see the two together? They the same? Right. Yeah. So let me show y'all yeah, something. When you look at these gods like this, you see his feet is bent up in a very crazy way. And what these gods will have, like, they feet bent up, but they will also have, like, a cup hat on, like Nefertiti, for example. Like, in the ancient world, you will see this trend a lot where you got this god, he's got, like, this inverted pyramid on top of his head, like this. Like, we wear birthday hats today. But imagine flipping your birthday hat upside down. You'll get this kind of Nefertiti hat, the opposite of a birthday hat. But also, they would have the inverted birthday hat on the head like that. But they also would have the feet bent up. So Jesus was a fish god. He would have been a mermaid. He would have had on this inverted cone hat, you know, with the pointed part on his pineal gland pointed toward his uh pineal gland 
and then his feet would be like this. And that's showing you this right here. If you look at the crown chakra, it's this, and it's this cone, but it's pointed downward. It's this triangle pointed downward, right? That, and, and then you got the inversion of that at the root chakra, and it makes you look like this mermaid-footed creature with an upside-down cone on your head. So now we got all of these weird religious symbolisms of mermaid feet creatures with cone hats on, and we try to make sense out of it. And we say, man, the ancestors were so religious and mythological and they didn't know the science when really all of these weird creatures was their way of personifying the science, the, the electromagnetic field around our body, what I'm showing you. You see, like, uh, for example, the god Saturn. Let me show you something about him. You see this god right here? Let me show you something about this god. That's all of us. Let me show you something. We are Saturn or Satan. And Satan, before religious took over, just was their way of saying how you fail. How you fail into the matrix. This is what we are. We are Saturn. Look. Part of you isn't. This is what your body made out of. Part of your body is a demon that climbed to this earth from hell. And part of your body is an angel that fell to this earth from heaven. And you got an angel on the demon on, on each shoulder in this solar tetrahedron. And here it is. It's, it's called a two-faced joker god. That's you. Look at you, your face. Two-faced. Because part of you, angel, and part of you is a uh, demon. Let me cook and show you all something about all of this symbolism they're giving us. See, this, this two-faced, and in Asia, right, they got another way of showing you this. They got these two little masks, and one of the masks is smiling, but one of the masks is sad. You ever saw that tattoo? With yeah, the, the left, left now or cry later. Cry later, yeah. That's this, this, we're born into a dual reality, negative, positive, masculine, feminine, evil, good. And because of that, we're also split up in between the two. And this is what you are. You're not one human being. What makes you you in this world is a, there's a version of you, right? that exists beneath this world in hell, and he's so fucking more evil. Listen what I'm saying. There's a version inside of you right now that this dude that's pointed down, right? That's a, 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 that's a real copy of your consciousness that lives in a universe beneath this world. We, are, we exist in all of these universes that I told you earlier in the underworld and the worlds above. We exist in all of them. So there's some evil versions of you that's below this world. And there's some heavenly versions of you that's above this world. You exist in all of these bubbles above and below. That's what I'm telling you. But right here in this earth, half of you is your demon version and half of you is your angel version right here. And that's a war plan out called Armageddon within yourself. Which one is going to win, the angel or the devil? Because whichever one win going to determine where you go next. Santa Claus wears a cone hat. And he got a big old pointy beard, right? Watch this. You know why Santa Claus got a big ass beard? And he got a, a pointed hat. For example, the symbolism we see. They got his beard coming to a point. See, Santa is Satan. There's a reason why Satan got a goatee, a big pointed beard, because he's Santa. But on, on Satan's, on, on Santa's head, it's the opposite of a beard pointed downward. He got a beard pointed upward. So Santa got on a cone hat with the cone pointed upward, and then he got this beard pointed downward. His face is in the middle of a diamond, and that's why I keep showing you this. Because Santa is wearing a cone hat that represents the triangle pointed upward. This, and, and his beard represents the one pointed downward. So th this is what it looks like, though. It looks like, like, the, like that, 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 that triangle that's pointed downward, that becomes the devil's goatee chin and the devil's tail. 
you see that associated with the underworld and then the one pointed upward, right? Of course, the, the angelical, but you mixed up in between. Both of them are, what's happening is you got this devil energy and you got this angelical energy making a tornado with the polarizing winds in this tetrahedron. This thing is turning around. And as it turn around, that's the fight that's going on. The, that's the, you know in a cartoon, when the two cartoon characters get to fighting, they dive into each other and start making a tornado bubble. And then one come out beat up, one come out not beat up and shit. But the, when they fighting, they making like this tornado that's fucking everything up. You don't really see them fighting. And the, that's really what's going on with this tetra. He, when polarizing winds meet, it makes a spiral vortex. Your angelical version of yourself met up with your hellish version of yourself, and you're your own vortex now got to work it out. You decide who win is war. Now, the Hindu said the key was to let neither side win, the good or the bad. But Ace. so what happened is instead of you ascending upward or ascending downward, if neither side win, you'll ascend inward. So this is the way we traveling through this multidimensional continuum and determining where we going. So in your next incarnation may lead to a simulation that's a more heavenly one above you, a more hellish one below you, or a more balanced one within you so that you can get closer to uh, getting acquainted with the energy at the core of the self. Either way it go, we will arrive at this same place of awakening uh, if we're not going on a path. See, even the one that's going on a path of descension is still going on a path of awakening because he's an evil devil that's saying, damn, I want to learn how I can be more evil. I'm not evil enough. And you're an angel that's saying, man, I want to become more righteous. You got some beings they energy ain't like yours. They don't care about all this kumbaya shit. They are war spirits who thrive off of evil. And it is their goal. They're trying to descend to the lowest of hells. They can't wait to meet the devil in the pits. And, you, and there's people here that's trying to ascend and meet the highest of angels in the heavens. All of that's playing out here. Yeah, you know. And we making our hey, choices. Yeah, hey, go ahead. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, have you studied the Taino um, cosmology? Uh, so. Go ahead. No, go into it. No, I haven't. Right. So, so they have they have these petroglyphs, right? And they have this one. It's a, it's a world. It's a. They call it the water, right? It's a petroglyph, but it's. It's actually a world. It's like a, you know, like a little spiral petroglyph. And um, they also have this cosmology, the, the, the great universe. Her name is um, Yaya. And uh, Atabe. And, and, and Atabe is the mother universe. Let's mute up everybody that ain't talking. Yeah, and and inside of her is a circle, which represents the earth. And um, what her son is, he's he's Furukane or hurt the hurricane, which uh, you already know what the hurricane is. So, and his his shape is like he's like a monkey, but he has like. His arms are kind of like a spiral as well, so they they give reference to the spiral like shape a lot. Okay, brother. Their, um, well, yeah, and you know what? And that's the Kundalini. That's the Jacob's ladder. Let me show you some. Right, the energy is spiraling. You see this picture of the Joker right here? Mm -hmm. That line that you see in the middle of his face, right there, is where our brain is split. This right here is the North Pole in the middle, and this split is where our consciousness is projecting from. It, see, this is what 
in, in between your eyes, man, what's creating this duality right here, we're moving from one. See, here's what's going on. When he moved to the left, he going backwards into previous worlds where he didn't master himself like that. And when he moved to the right, he moving forward into his next destination, becoming, progressing, and he's evolving. So as he stepped to the left, he got the version of himself that was born into this world. He keep half of that memory, half of that, he keep that. And then he adopt this other 50% half of him that he's going to be fused with from his other evil self in the other world from on the left. And he make this whole Joker image again with the two. And but if he moved to the right, guess what? Fifty percent of who he is and what he became in this world, he keep. And then he merged that with a better 50 percent of this other refined, more positive version of himself in another world. And he keep moving, moving like that with this split right there. Always keeping one half of that part maintain a fuse with the newer version part of who you are in this lifetime is half of who you was in the last one that half have- represents all the experience of your previous incarnation consolidated and compressed into what we call uh, the right side of your brain or intuitive energy and the left side of your brain is this new version that's using instinct to try to rise up to its intuitive side. And when that energy crosses over the crack and, re- and reunite with the right side, then you, you constantly progress and then you get these other versions. You're fusing together with these higher versions of yourself or lower versions of yourself up and down this pole in and out of these tetrahedrons where you become the split. If, if this, I hope this makes sense to y'all. See, this split here is the kundalini. That's what, see, the energy is recycling itself at this crossover point, this split. And what's going on is a tornado is happening. And just like a tornado, which one is going to win? The hot wind or the cold wind? That's the devil or the angel. Either one that win is going to end the war. And that's going to be, it's going to conclude that. And let's say when the tornado is over, if we have a warm front, the warm air worn. When the tornado is over, if cold weather follows it, the cold air worn. And that's how your life is. Like when this tornado is over and this uh, clock stops spinning, which is you and your own tetrahedron, when it stops spinning, which front worn? The cold or the hot, the angel or demon? That determines which one your consciousness attached to and, and take a ride with to its next destination. This is the interpretation of our reality according to the Hindu, a lot of people. Not just me, but even when you look at this image of Saturn, like I said, that's that's us right It looks here. like he's pulling each other. They're pulling each other. 